Let's go ahead and look at an example where we're doing combined operations. The previous videos only did a single operation, either a time shift or a time reversal or a time compression. Let's see what happens when we start combining operations. So let's start with our signal X of T and let's go ahead and shift and scale the time index to yield the new signal Y of T. So we're gonna create the signal Y of T equals X of AT minus B. So right away you can see there's some time shifting going on because there's kind of a, a minus B part and there's also some scaling going on because T has been replaced with AT. So our goal is to create this and there's actually two ways we can go about doing this. To do that we need to remember some things. First of all remember the rule about time shifting. Time shifting is an algebraic substitution of replacing t with t minus some quantity or t plus some quantity. In this case, it looks pretty obvious that it should be something like t minus b is a pretty good choice. Similarly, time scaling is an algebraic substitution where you replace t with something like a t, right? And obviously choosing something like a in this case makes sense because we're trying to create this signal x of a t minus b. So let's go ahead and generate this final signal in two ways. And here are the two ways we're going to do it. And then we're going to look at a third way that you might try that seems reasonable but doesn't work out. And the point of this is to emphasize the fact that when you're doing combined operations, you have to be really careful in the order that you do them. All right, so let's look at method one. In method one, I'm going to start with x of t. And the first operation I'm going to do, kind of indicated by this arrow, is a time shift. So I'm going to replace t with t minus b, and I'm going to end up with x of t minus b. And I have the shift part there that I like to see. Now I need to go ahead and get in a t somehow. So what do I do there? Well, I'm going to go ahead and do the time scaling. The rule for time scaling is look here and find every t and replace it with AT in this case. So that T gets replaced with AT. And look what I end up with. I end up with X of AT minus B. And that's why I put a check mark right there. That's exactly where I wanted to end up. So in method one here, I did time shifting followed by time scaling. And I was able to use basically B and A exactly as you kind of see them in that equation. All right, let's do method two. Method two is going to do the opposite order. It's going to do time scaling and then time shifting. And we'll still end up where we want to end up, namely x of at minus b, but the values that we use aren't as obvious. So what do I mean by that? Okay, let's start with x of t, and we're going to do the time scaling first. So the obvious choice for the time scaling is to replace t with at. So that's exactly what happened here. t got replaced by at. All right, now let's go ahead and do the time shifting. You might be tempted to replace T with T minus B, but that's not going to work out. I actually need to replace T with T minus B over A. Why is that? Well, look right here. This A is already multiplying the T variable. So after I multiply this out, I get A times T, which is exactly what I want, minus A times B over A. So notice the A's cancel and I'm left with just B. So after I distribute that, I end up with exactly AT minus B like I wanted. But notice kind of the weird thing is the time shift that I performed here was a very different time shift. It was a time shift of T minus B over A. Why? Because I'd already done time scaling first and I needed to account for that in the shift. Let's go ahead and redo this order here in method three. So in method three, I'm gonna do the same order. I'm gonna do time shifting and time scaling, and I'm gonna use the kind of quote obvious values of A and B. And we'll see if we do that, you know, we do not end up with the right answer. So X of T replace T with AT, and I end up right there just like we wanted. What happens now if I do the time shift and I replace T with T minus B, which kind of seems like the obvious choice. Well, after you do that, after you multiply this out, I get AT minus AB. 
And I just noticed after I do that, that should be AT minus AB, not BT there, right? So AT minus AB is not AT minus B, right? So this is just emphasizing if you do the compression first, you can't use kind of the obvious values right there. So bottom line is be careful. And I always prefer to do time shifting first because you can use the values you kind of see right there. If you decide to do time scaling first, the value you use for the shift needs to be kind of this odd version that has the scale factor on the denominator so it cancels out after you've done the multiplication. All right, so that's it for this example. There's actually about four more videos left in this uh, part of the playlist where we work through other signal operation examples. So check those out in the subsequent videos.